Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison. I'm on the developer education team here at Planet Scale. In this video, we're going to step through the Go Quick Start from our documentation portal, which is a simple API built with the Jin routing framework that demonstrates how to connect to a Planet Scale database using Go to send and receive data. We're going to start by creating a database inside of Planet Scale. We're then going to clone the sample application from GitHub down to the computer, configure it to connect to the database that was just created, and finally, using the VS Code REST client plugin, we're going to test sending and receiving some data. Let's get started. If you've never used Planet Scale before and have just signed up for an account, this is the screen you will see. Now you have two options here. You can either step through the wizard, which will explain the Planet Scale workflow, or you can simply click create down here to create the database. I'm going to click create, and then we're going to create a database named products underscore DB and click create database. Your database will take a few minutes to initialize. So I'm going to fast forward the video here before proceeding. Once the database has finished initializing, you'll be able to run some commands to the database to create a table and insert some data. In order to access the console for the main branch, let's go ahead and select branches and then click on main and finally console. Now I'm going to paste a script in here, which is available on our documentation portal that creates a simple table named products, an ID column that acts as our primary key, a name, which is a string column, and then a price, which is an integer that will hold the price for the products that we want to store. I'm going to hit enter to go ahead and create that table. And then I'm also going to paste another script in here, which is just going to insert a couple of rows of data into that table for us to work with. Okay, once the data has been inserted, we can grab a connection string from the Planet Scale console. So head back to the overview tab, click on the connect button. Since this is the first time you're accessing this modal, your connection details will be displayed in plain text. These credentials must remain private as anyone who has that can connect to your database. From the connect dropdown, let's go ahead and select go and then copy the contents of the ENV tab, which contains the connection string required to connect to the database. The next step is to clone the example Git repository down to your computer. We can do this by typing in Git clone and then the URL of the repository, which is github.com forward slash planet scale forward slash golang example gin .git. I'll hit enter and the sample application will be cloned down to our computer. Next, let's open this in VS code by changing to the directory that was created when cloning the repository and typing in code was followed by a period. Now that I have the repository open in VS Code, I'm going to create a new file called .env, which will store the connection string that was taken from the Planet Scale portal. I'll paste this in and save the file. Next, I'm going to open up an integrated terminal, and then I'm going to use the command go run followed by a period, which will run the application. You should see the output on screen, which shows the various HTTP methods mapped to the routes, followed by a line that says listing and serving HTTP on port 8080. Before we test the API, let's take a look at the code so we can see what exactly is going on behind the scenes. I'm going to open the main.go file here, and I'm going to close out this terminal below. And let's take a look here. The first section is going to pull in the environment variables from the .env file to be used within our application, specifically the connection string that was received from PlanetScale. The second section here is going to open a connection to the database using the DSN environment variable and the MySQL driver for Go. And then finally, we create a new instance of the Jin router and then map HTTP methods git, post, put, and delete to corresponding functions inside of the application for git products, create product, update product, and delete product. Scrolling down to examine the first git products statement here, we can see we're going to take a query string and we're going to pass it into db.query. This is going to execute that query and pass our results into this res or response object here. Next, we can iterate over the response and parse every single one of those lines into an instance of the struct product that I have here, and then finally send it back to the caller. To demonstrate how this works, let's go ahead and open up the test.htp file where I have various test methods here defined to test the API. I'm going to go ahead and click send request next to get products, and we can see the outputs from the database are being returned in JSON as defined within the application. In order to pass parameters into queries in Go, you would use a question mark as a placeholder within the specific query string. Then when you call the function that executes the query from the database, you would pass in query as your first parameter, and then anything that follows is going to populate the question marks in the order they were received. Back in the test.htp file, we can see get single product maps to forward slash products and then forward slash the ID of that specific product. If I send this request, we will see we'll get back a single product that contains the row from the database with the ID of two. Next, we'll take a look at how you can pass multiple parameters into a single query. In this instance, for creating a product, we want to use an insert statement 
followed by the name of the table, the columns we want to add the values to, and then we're going to use question marks as those placeholders for the values that will be passed in. Then in the db.exec function, we pass in the query followed by our two parameters, name and price, in the same order that they were shown inside the query. Back inside of test.htp, we can see we're going to pass in a body to the request with name and price both defined. When I send this, you can see a new record was created with an ID of four, along with the name and price that was used for the request. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding on how to work with PlanetScale using the Go language. For more examples and quick starts, visit our documentation portal at planetscale.com forward slash docs. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.